Welcome back to The Delaware Way. I'm Larry Menti. We continue our conversation now with the State Treasurer of Delaware, Colleen Davis. We had a conversation during the break when we talked about uh, literacy in schools, and you said that you, you were talking about funding for to increase literacy in schools. And I said, oh, how are you involved with that? And you explained, so you can explain to the viewers. Sure, viewers. yeah. So with um, we currently have a financial literacy task force. Um, what has happened is educators got behind it and said, yes, we believe in this, and, and we agree that this is something that, uh, that we'd like to take part in. And so they've developed a career curriculum so that K through 12, all of our kids are prepared at different stages to sort of meet the mark and, and really prepare them for. But it's interesting the state treasurer is involved yeah. in that. Be mm -hmm. They come to you to, to ask about, will this work? Do we have the funding for this? Is that how it works? Well, in all actuality, um, you're looking for legislation. So well, anytime you want to make these types of changes, you're, you need a legislator to get behind you and help to champion it. And that's where the state treasurer can get involved. Um, there are lots of relationships that we establish. and. Um, it's great because we get to know who's the person that's really passionate about this, who, who are the right legislators to speak to about it, because we're talking about the kids across the entire state, and not everyone has the same interest when it comes to um, developing financial literacy so for So are kids. you involved in most legislation that has to do with funding? A lot of it. Are you consulted? And Yes, yeah, so a lot of it I am, um, and it's actually been really very interesting process. The, the census I know is important to the state. Are you involved yeah. in that? Because that does, uh, that does mean increased funding if the census numbers go up. Yes, and I think that a lot of people have uh, expressed significant concern. You know, people are coming to me and saying, what are we going to do? Uh, majority of people are not in a position where we can go through an electronic census. And I think we're, we're taking steps to ensure that we get there and try to meet people where they are so that we're not missing a single person. Um, because again, sometimes um, people have this sense of privacy that they, they don't want to be bothered, and yet at the same time, if we don't count every single person, it means that our federal dollars don't get earmarked in the same way, and, and we could be losing Which money. Which affects everything. Yes. And, and it does affect taxes, because you, to make it up, you'd have to increase taxes. It's true. Um, I, 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 might have, I might have done this wrong in saving this till last. I probably <laughs> should have put it somewhere else, but welcome to the public spotlight, because now you've made the papers for a uh, traffic stop that it turned out you had a suspended license. Yes. Do you want to explain that? Sure. So um, I, I had received a, a speeding ticket. I definitely was speeding. Um, however, I wanted to contest it because lots of reasons. But uh, in any case, um, I requested a date and the date passed. I didn't receive notice. Um, and So you didn't know you had a suspended precisely. license. Precisely. And, and the day that you don't show up, your license is suspended. So oftentimes you don't receive it until, you know, maybe a couple of days later. So somewhere in the midst of, of um, a busy life, um, I didn't receive notice and I'd had a suspended license. Were you surprised at the coverage of it? Because it seems like, I mean, they went back in your history and they found out you had four suspended licenses over 20 years, but the other ones were in your, your early 20s, right? Right, yeah. I was actually um, a teenager and in grad school at the time, and uh, so I wasn't at home. And again, you know, my parents received notification and, and I didn't. And I believe the one when I was a teenager, this is the, the crazy part about it was um, I was 17 and my, my father was actually having his kidney removed at Johns Hopkins. Um, so when all of this broke, uh, he called me up and, and said, you know, I'm so sorry that we failed you. And I said, come on, what do you mean? And, and he explained, he said, you know, we weren't there for you. I was, I was in the hospital, I was sick. You didn't know what was going to happen. I had an aunt who was with us um, as a teenager who was um, helping to care for us, but a lot of the responsibility was on me as a, a senior in high school. And, um, and so I helped as best I could, but he just sort of said, we, we failed you. I said, dad, you didn't fail me. Right. You have been there for me, you know, 100%. And so I didn't want to talk about it in that way because I did not want him taking that responsibility. Or my mom, you know, they both um, have been so behind me. Did so. you learn something from this? Is there a lesson from this? Definitely. Oh, anytime you make a mistake, there's always a lesson to be learned. And so I'm grateful for that. I would say that in this instance, uh, the true lesson was you're now in the spotlight, and um, and 
you know, one of the blessings to that is that sometimes you can be in the spotlight and sort of feel above everything, and you need these moments to sort of bring you back down and remind you to be humble and remind you that you are just a person, just like everyone else, and, and you know, you're going to fail. Well, hopefully it's behind you now. Next time you come on, we can just talk Thank the you. economy and, and, the, and the state treasury. Colleen Davis, the state treasurer of Delaware. When we come back, setting a nice foundation so that high school students do well when they get to colleges and universities. We'll talk about that when the Delaware Way continues right after this.